Good morning, my friends. This is the day after Election Day, November 7th, 2018. Well, I don't know if you're uh, um, happy about the election or unhappy about the election, but it's always a uh, special time in a democracy when that takes place. And there probably ought to be a good video about uh, the democratic process. Uh, maybe we can uh, uh, work on that sometime. But today, today is a different kind of video. Today, I'm going to explain to you what it means to put on the full armor of God. Pretty interesting. If you'd like to follow along, it's Ephesians chapter 6. It makes it crystal clear. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, sanctify us and set us apart, Lord, to do your will this morning. Teach us the things we need to know about the full armor of God and show us the way, Lord. Lead us to that one person that we might win to your kingdom. We love you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I graduated from college in 1964, just a few years ago. <laughs> About two weeks after I graduated from college, I went into the service, the military service. I joined the United States Army, and I was stationed to do my basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey. I went through infantry training, and I went through advanced infantry training there. And then I went down to Fort Benning, Georgia, to go through jump school and hopefully ranger school. Well, the Lord had other ideas about all of that, but... I'll explain it to you as we go along. I really liked being a soldier. I was a good athlete when I was uh, when I was younger, and um, it wasn't that I could that I was a great athlete, but I I, I was well coordinated. I had good reflexes, and uh, you need that. And uh, I learned what a soldier needed to have as far as protection. Uh, you need to have good footwear. You gotta be, gotta have warm footwear in, in some parts of the world. Uh, you, but footwear is really important. And then of course you have to have a uniform that is conducive to whatever it is you're trying to do. So sometimes you have a dressed up uniform and sometimes you have a fatigue uniform and sometimes you have special uniforms. And you have special things to go along with it. I mean, you have a backpack. Um, you have certainly a belt. You have uh, different equipment. And <clears throat> the equipment that I carried when I was in the service was the old M1. <laughs> I'm dating myself now. That's a long time ago. Um, but we had to take that M1 apart, put it back together again, and we, we practiced it until we got real good at it. We had to learn how to clean the weapon and so forth. And um, I liked being a soldier. What does that have to do with the full armor of God? Well, Paul tells us in the sixth chapter of Ephesians that we need to put on the full armor of God. And he uses a Roman soldier. As an example, a Roman soldier had a helmet, protect his brain, protect his head, very important. He had a, a breastplate to protect the heart and the, the lungs and the, uh, the, the chest area, which are vital. Had a very secure belt to keep everything together. And the Roman soldier had good footwear because uh, they had to go into all kinds of terrain. Um, the Roman soldier also had a shield to ward off arrows and any obstacles that were thrown his way. It helped protect him. And in hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, or sometimes sword-to-sword -sword combat, he had the one offensive weapon was a short, probably a 15-inch uh, uh, double-bladed sword um, that he would encounter hand-to-hand -hand combat. And um, it's really important to know how to use that sword. And um, so that explains what the Roman soldier looked like. Now, 
I'm going to explain to you how Paul relates it, very cleverly relates it to being a born-again Christian. Recently, I did a video on being born again. Well, how do you protect yourself as a born-again Christian? Well, you put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation not only protects your brain, the vital aspect that the brain um, keeps everything in your body working properly, um, but salvation gives you the physical and the mental and the spiritual knowledge that one day your body is going to die and go back to the ground as dust to dust, and your spirit is going to go to be with the Lord. And on the great day of resurrection, uh, the spirit and, and uh, the body, uh, perfect body, the incorruptible body are going to be united. And that's the body that, as I said in a video recently, uh, that you're going to have for all of eternity. It'll never wear out. You're never going to get tired in heaven. You don't have to sleep. You can eat if we want to. You don't have to. Um, you can move at what I call the speed of Jesus. You just say it and you're there. I don't know how that all works, but I'm sure looking forward to it. Well, you put on the helmet of salvation and you put on the chest plate of righteousness. When you're right, you're protected. You have righteousness that comes through Calvary. Jesus paid the price for your righteousness. So you put on the chest plate of righteousness, and you put on the belt of truth. Wow. A belt is related to truth. The truth, the Bible says, will set you free. The truth is the word of God. The truth will sanctify you and separate you into that special group of born-again believers. Yeah, there's some coffee if you want it. Okay, thank you. That was my brother just offered me some coffee if I wanted it. And uh, so I'll get some after this video is made. <laughs> One of the marvels of making a video is... Uh, uh, People can interrupt you. That it's not gonna it's not gonna bother me at all. Back to the items needed to be fully protected, the full armor of God. Your feet needs to be shod, the Bible says in Ephesians six, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Jesus said in his great commission. Go and take the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. And then Jesus departed. We need to have the shield of faith. How many times have I told you that you can't please God without faith? Hebrews eleven six. Well, when you have the shield of faith, you can ward off the fiery darts of the devil because he's coming after you. He's going to come after you. He's going to come after me, and he's going to do it every day, and he's going to have demons assigned to us, and uh, um, it's a good thing that I have a guardian angel or maybe more than one. I would imagine my guardian angel is put in for a transfer every week for a long, long time. <laughs> I say that kidding. I, I, I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't get it. <laughs> I need all the protection that I can get. But we need to be protected. So a helmet is a defensive piece of equipment. The chest plate of righteousness, defensive uh, um, piece of equipment. Um, good footwear, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, defensive. Uh, equipment, uh, the belt of truth to, to keep your uniform and to keep your armor together, defensive equipment, shield, ward off the fiery darts of the devil, defensive uh, part of your equipment, and then the one offensive weapon that Paul talks about, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Roman soldier would use his sword. Boy, I'll tell you, he was good at it too. Very well trained. Well, 
you need to be very well trained. You need to be trained in the Word of God. And you know what you have to do to be trained in the Word of God? <laughs> you need to read it. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Yeah, you need to read it or you need to hear it. And uh, be good to memorize it a little bit. Uh, I remembered in the beginning I wanted to memorize Scripture. And my first Scripture that I memorized was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and I, I've memorized a few others since then. And uh, the Lord's been good to me that way. Why we, should we put on the full armor of God? To be protected. Why should we be protected? So we can be productive. Why should we be, be, be pro productive? Because God wants us to be. Jesus told us to be. Why do we have the Ten Commandments? Because we can, we can find out what we're, what we're not supposed to do and we're, we find out what we are supposed to do, uh, depending on which ones of, of the Ten Commandments you're talking about. Why do we have rules and regulations? Well, to help us. To help us do what God wants us to do. I will keep on telling you that God wants you to know where he is. Well, he's in heaven. And he wants you to know why he is. Um, he decided that he was going to create humanity. One day. One time. Why? I don't know. Uh, completely, but I think it was because he wanted to create a being that would love him and he would love them. And, and he wanted you to, <clears throat> excuse me, he wanted you to know who he is. God Almighty the Father and God the Son Jesus and God the sweet Holy Spirit are all interwoven into one God three separate identities, separate responsibilities, and separate powers, if you will. What a God we have. When Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God, that's to protect us wherever we go. Um, you have to be ready for the unexpected. I want to ask you one question. Would you go outside in the summer or in the fall or in the winter or in the spring without any clothes on? Come on, brother, I don't know. No, you'd get dressed, right? In the wintertime, you probably have a lot of clothes on. In the summertime, not so many, lightweight and so forth. I'm making a point. We have protection. We have a need for vital protection and that comes with the full armor of God the helmet of salvation the chest plate of righteousness the belt of truth feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace the sword of the spirit which is the word of God the shield of faith and then one other thing that I haven't mentioned yet prayer Pray with all supplication. Pray without ceasing. Pray for your brothers and sisters and pray for the unbelievers that they would come to know Jesus the same way you did. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for this time together. And thank you, Lord, that we can be your people and we can do your will, that we can share the gospel. And let us do that today, Lord. Let us bring up the conversation with whoever we might be with so that people would know that we are believers and that we share Christ with others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. Y'all have a good day. Love y'all. Bye-bye.